and we can save this and so at least now we've got these things aligned now for the main nav though if you look in our styles this is what we've got for our style sheet so far um, and by the way this is something that I'm a little fussy about is this article see how this article is at the very top here but if you look at the actual source code the first thing you encounter is the body then the main nav and then later is an article well I'm fussy about that so I'm gonna take this I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna put it down here it makes things easier to find whenever you're mimicking the order that's actually the order of the HTML page and you know in your style sheet you're mimicking the order of the HTML page so anyway I'm gonna save this but uh, we haven't done anything to make the main nav stick up there, right? So if I wanted to put, by the way, if I want to put uh, something in a specific place in here, I could come and I could say main nav, and I have to close it with my curly brace, and then this is an empty rule, sort of like this, but this actually, this rule has some properties and values. Well, this one is an empty rule. So now if I save that, you'll see if I hit refresh over here, in my CSS panel, main nav shows up as an option. Okay, so I can edit that now, and it won't add it to some weird spot in my CSS file. And what I can do is uh, I want to go where it says positioning, and because we want this thing to be at the very top, we want to tell it to be fixed. So if I hit apply, it doesn't look like it did anything, but if I go where it says top, I need to say zero, and left zero, so it's going to orient itself to the very top, uh, top left zero pixel. Um, then that means it's going to always stay up in that spot because it's fixed. It won't scroll with the page. But I need to make sure that it's always on top of other things. So there's this thing called z-index. I'm going to give it a z-index, z-index of 100. You could give it pretty much any number because if we don't give anything else a z-index. Um, then it's going to assume the z-index of 0 or 1. Uh, yeah, so in, it, it'll always stay up on top if it's the z-index uh, that's higher than any other number. So if we tell this to be 100, then later if we decide that we want to put other z-indexes that float under it too, we could do anywhere from 1 to 99. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit apply and uh, say OK. And uh, let's just go ahead and save this really quick unless you don't want to save it. Um, can go to Google Chrome, we'll test it, and you see what it, it's doing. It's doing this crazy thing. All right, sort of nutty. Now, you'll notice that ever since we changed that, this H1 is now sort of the very top of the page, and this part is looks like it's underneath it. Well, the reason it's doing that is because whenever you fix something, you give it an absolute or a fixed position, it does a thing called taking it out of the document flow and so that the browser basically doesn't see the, that the rest of the page has any interaction with it. Okay, so it where this used to take up space, this nav bar right here, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't think that it's taking up space anymore and so the headings just automatically go up to the very top of the page. So we have to fix that too. And actually, one other thing I want to point out real quick about this is that if you look at where it says link 1, link 2, link 3, link 4, the other thing too that I, I forgot to mention is that it also collapsed these so that all four of them are still butt up next to each other instead of being spread out over 25% each across the whole top of the page. That's something that changed ever since we fixed the position. And another part of taking something like that out of the document flow is when you fix a position like that, you typically have to tell it how wide to be. So let's also do that when we go here. So if we go back to the main nav, um, I can either change it here or I can double click it over here in the CSS styles panel. I'll do that. And I need to tell it if you go to the box, and by the way, box stands for box model. All right, it's just, it's referred to as the box model. I'm not going to go into that. I could explain it, but I'm not going to. Um, at least not right now. So I need to tell the width. I want it to be 100%. Okay, and then <clears throat> I can tell that to be like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and click OK. And before we start to fuss with it to try to make it look right. Let's go ahead and test that. 
and make sure it looks the way that we expect it to look. And see now at least they're all spread out across the um, the entire width of the browser. Okay, so I think that's a pretty important uh, thing to to make note of is that whenever you fix something you've got to set the width typically and also because each list item is taking 25 percent it needs to know 25 percent of what normally a block level element like a list item or excuse me a list like an unordered list or something will take up 100 percent natively without you having to tell it to but once you pull it out of the document flow and either give it an absolute position or fixed position you typically have to tell it how wide to be if you want its descendants like its list items and things like that to know how uh, how much 25 percent is 25 25 percent of what um, okay so I'll go ahead and close these up again let's go back and then the other things we're going to focus on is to try to how try to figure out how to make it look like this and also make it so that this article information doesn't just disappear you know up underneath okay okay so let's come back now and let's go ahead and deal with these uh, links up here before I fix it so that the um, heading doesn't dive up underneath it I want to go ahead and make this a solid bar uh, so that it looks like buttons kind of so right now the links just are these weird blue underlined things and by the way that is what is going to natively happen to, to any kind of link on a page is it, it it's treated differently than normal text you'll notice that um, the text of the page here is like this sort of very dark charcoal color where it didn't cascade down into the definition for the links. Well, that's normal. That's because um, links will take on their own properties. So you have to style them for certain for certain properties. You have to style them independently of other kinds of text. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back into my source code, and I'm going to actually highlight a link here, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a new property. And you see that it's giving me the descendant rule of any <clears throat> excuse me, anchor inside of a list item, inside of an unordered list that is also inside of the main ID nav, we'll get this rule. So that's what we want. First off, we're going to go ahead and tell it to have a text decoration of none so that the um, underline will go away. We can hit apply and you see the underline disappears. Also, we're going to go ahead and give it a, a color. Um, well, I'm not going to give it a color just yet, all right, because here I'll just tell it to be black for right now um, if I apply you see it goes black but what I want to do is I want to make sort of like a, a, a background color for these uh, links so let's actually go ahead where it says background real quickly and let's pick background color and we'll pick like this dark um, actually let's pick black We'll apply it and see now you can't really read the text because it's black on black. So let's go back where it says type and we'll pick the color as white and apply it. And okay, well, you might th be thinking, all right, well, that's not an attractive button. It, it's just, you know, got the black right up next to the text. That's because an A tag or an anchor tag is referred to as an inline element. So inline elements only take up as much room as they have to because they're intended to sit side by side each other on a line whereas block level elements things like this this h1 right here it says this is where the link one stuff goes that's uh, an inherently a block level element which will take up an entire line unless otherwise specified so what we have to do for this uh, for this a tag is we have to do something additional and we have to go over here to where it says block and we have to tell it to be display block so that it basically takes on a different kind of property, a different style. And it behaves, instead of like behaving like an inline element, it behaves like a block and it takes up as much room as possible. And then even though it looks okay here in some browsers, uh, you still have to tell it, even though you're telling it display block, you still have to tell it to take up 100% okay and uh, of its width and height so we're gonna go to where it says box and we're gonna tell it to take up a hundred percent of its parent which is the list item and then a hundred percent height of its parent apply and then now it'll fill up almost being like a balloon inside of that list item it'll fill up the entire list item and the benefit of that is that then if, here let's click OK 
is that then whenever I hover over any part of that button instead of just hovering over the word any part of that anchor now that's physically taking up so much space will be clickable whereas if I hadn't made it block level and I hadn't expanded at a hundred percent I would have to literally f hover right over the word itself and it wouldn't work over the, the background and you've probably seen websites like that where it's really frustrating you think something should be a button but it's not you have to actually click the word anyway so uh, let's go ahead and test that we'll save it and let's look at it in Chrome and you see that no matter where I put the little hand it's a link okay now if I click on it you see it jumps it'll take me to the correct place but it's still diving the stuff up at the top but one thing that's a little bit confusing is like I can't tell where I'm clicking right so we should probably add a hover state so let's go back in in here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over here into the style sheet excuse me right here and I'm gonna go scroll down where it says main nav ul uh, ul li a I'm gonna copy this I'm not copying the whole rule and then down below the curly brace that ends that one I'm gonna paste a new one and I'm gonna go ahead and end that curly brace and then what I'm gonna do here on uh, line 35 is that I'm gonna go right after the A and I'm gonna put colon hover we're going to define the hover state of the anchor tag and the only thing that you whenever you're doing a this is referred to as a pseudo class or a pseudo state sorry uh, pseudo state rule whenever you do a pseudo state you don't have to change you don't have to define everything all you have to define is what you're chang changing about that original a tag or whatever it is so all I'm going to be changing is the background and the color so I'm going to copy these two rules so let's go ahead and copy and then right here I'm going to paste them and instead of the color the color defines the text color the background defines the background color I'm actually going to uh, sort of switch these up I'm gonna make the the background color let's do something like um, okay by the way let me show you something in Dreamweaver if I basically delete everything here including the colon like this and I hit the and I press colon here it'll prompt me with this little tool tip and then I can arrow key down and hit return on color and it gives me the color picker okay so let's just say we're gonna choose like I don't know, like this color sort of yellow color this FC6 number and you have to have this pound symbol by the way for hexadecimal otherwise it won't work and you also have to make sure that you terminate these uh, or end these rules with a semicolon so that's gonna be the text color so let's change the background color now to um, let's just try like a 333 which is a dark charcoal color um, you know we might make it lighter than that and let's save that and we can test it you can also do this there's this little live button in Dreamweaver it doesn't always work that's why I haven't been showing it to you it doesn't always work the same way it's gonna work in a browser so I a lot of, a lot of times don't use it but um, I will show it to you so you can test like the hover state okay so you can see that that's working and then you can turn live back off now you just we need to figure out how to get this empty space up here to disappear what's happening is that remember I said that the browser natively will apply a style sheet if there are certain things that are not set specifically in the CSS for instance uh, what's happening I can tell you right now just from experience is that first off where we have this main nav UL well we told the padding to be zero but it also has a native margin so the first thing I'm going to try to do is go ahead here and I can just add the rule directly or if you're not comfortable typing you can also look over here and double click and what I'm going to do is go to box and I'm going to tell the uh, margin to also be zero all the way around I'll hit apply and you see that it bumps it up and that took care of it for me okay so we should be good now if I hit save test it really quickly by doing this and then you see it's working but now everything disappears up underneath it so that's the next thing that we need to go ahead and work on correcting